Hey there! Welcome to this tutorial where we will learn how to upload files to a remote location in a Node.js environment using Multer, Cloudinary, and MySQL. We will cover everything from installing Express and Multer, setting up Cloudinary, creating a MySQL database, and connecting it with our app. Let's dive in. To get started, we will initialize npm in an empty directory and create an entry file, app.js, for our app along with an HTML file to render the form and stored images. Once done, we will install Express with npm and change the main file to app.js in our package.json. Moving ahead, we will create our Express server and start running it on our local machine. We have a boilerplate for Express as a snippet. So let's use it and then start the server in watch mode with Nodemon. The next thing we need is to install and set up Multer. We'll install it with npm and create a new file for configuration so that our main app.js file stays clean. We will import Multer and then define our storage. Here we need to use memory storage and then provide this storage to the upload middleware. Let's export upload function and then import it in our app.js file. Next, we need to install MySQL and create a connection to the database. We will also create a new file for the database and import MySQL. Then we will configure the connection with database credentials, which takes four values, host, user, password, and database name. Finally, we'll connect to the database and export the connection.
we will import the connection in app.js the same way we did with Multer. Next, we have to install both Cloudinary and .env packages using npm. Although .env is not mandatory, we will require it because we plan to store the Cloudinary API credentials in an env file. We should create an env file and add some variables, which will be substituted with Cloudinary API credentials at a later stage. Here we need to have cloud name, API key, and API secret. Let's import Cloudinary in our main file. We should have copm leaded database connection earlier, but now we need to add our credentials to my SQL connection. To proceed, we will manually create a database and a table using the graphical user interface tool for my SQL, known as my SQL Workbench. For those who may not be familiar, this tool is the official tool that allows you to design, create, and browse your database schemas. After setting up the schema, we can proceed to establish a table in our images database, featuring columns such as name, type, URL, and public ID. Following this, we need to modify the connection in our application. In our application, it is necessary to provide authentication information for the connection, including the host, which should be either localhost or 127.0.0.1, as well as the username, password, and name of the database. Upon running the application, a message is logged in the console indicating that a successful connection to the database has been established. Let's revisit the configuration for Cloudinary, where we are required to input the cloud name, API key, and API secret. In order to read environment variables from a .env file, it is necessary to require the .env package at the beginning of the app.js file.
To obtain API credentials for Cloudinary, you must first create a free account on their website at cloudinary.com. Once you have signed up, navigate to the dashboard page where you should be able to locate your API credentials. Copy these credentials to your ENV file. Our image upload process will consist of two steps. Firstly, we will upload the file to Cloudinary. And secondly, we will store the image details in the database. It's important to follow this order since we won't have access to the image URL until we receive a response from Cloudinary. The file information from the form will be read using upload.single method of Multer. This method accepts the field name in the form as a parameter and saves the file data in rec.file. Here is our form located on the index.html page, which uses the post method to send data to the slash upload route. Remember to include the enc type attribute in the form. The form contains a single input field with file type and a name attribute of image. Additionally, there is a submit button that initiates the action attribute. At the end of the file, there are some script lines that retrieve data from our database using the slash images route. The retrieved images are then dynamically displayed in the DOM element with an ID of images. Let's return to our application and pass the name of our form field to the upload.single method. We can extract the necessary information from the rect file object to store in our MySQL table by destructuring it. To upload the actual file to Cloudinary, we will be calling the upload underscore stream method from the uploader object. This method will pass the currently uploaded file to Cloudinary and return either an error or a result. If there are no errors, the result object will contain information about the uploaded file, particularly the image URL and public ID. Now we can destructure the result object and extract the necessary information for our database table. Now, we can combine the information obtained from Multer and Cloudinary into a single object and then create a SQL mutation and pass this object to it. This will allow us to store the necessary information in our database. But wait! What if we use the URL generator function offered by Cloudinary to create a customized URL for the uploaded file, rather than using its original URL? This feature can prove to be useful in situations where we need to tailor the URL according to our specific needs. To make use of this function, simply pass the public ID of the uploaded file and any desired transformation parameters to the cloudinary.url function. The function will then generate a customized URL for the file, which can be utilized within our application. In this section, we'll define the transformation parameters for our image. For instance, we can specify a width of 150 pixels, a height of 100 pixels, and choose the Crop to Fill option. Once we access the image using this generated URL, it will be resized automatically based on these parameters. Next, we'll create an SQL insert statement and use the data object as input. When performing this query operation, we can expect either an error or a result. If an error occurs, we will log it to the console. Otherwise, we will display a success message and proceed.
To stop streaming our file, we need to end the buffer in the upload middleware. With the uploading process complete, let's create our post route and call the upload image function. Please remember to ensure that the path used in our route matches the one specified in the action attribute of our form. Now, we need to render the images from the cloud in our DOM. To achieve this, we'll create a get route that matches the one specified in the fetch call on our client side page. This route will retrieve the image data from the cloud and send it back to the client to be rendered in the DOM. We will now construct an SQL select statement and pass it to the MySQL connections query operation to obtain the data we need. The resulting output should contain our images information stored in the datums. Finally, we'll send this data back to the origin where the request was made. We know that our client side page is requesting this data, which it will then distribute into components and pass to the DOM. Great! We have finished coding. Let's test the application by restarting the server and loading the home page in our browser. It appears that there may be an issue with the SQL statements. It seems that the issue may have been caused by misspelling the table names. Let's correct them and try running the code again. Great! If the console is clear and there are no more error messages, we are ready to load our app in the browser. Let's upload our first image. Hit upload button and... Yes, we got the success message. Let's verify if the data has been stored by checking our database table. The image details have been saved in the table, along with a personalized URL that will display the transformed image upon rendering. Now that our database is functioning correctly, let's proceed to log in to the Cloudinary dashboard. From there, we can navigate to the Media Library tab to verify whether our image has been successfully uploaded to the cloud storage. We can upload additional images now. As we do so, you'll notice that the transformed images are being displayed on our page, thanks to the retrieval of information from our database and the fetching of images from the cloud storage. Thank you for staying with me until the end. I look forward to presenting a new video discussing JSON Web Tokens, their significance, uses, and implementation in a Node.js application. See you soon.